<clears throat> okay, Sheikh, my next question, it's a little bit, uh, a bit serious, right? Now, all of us at some stage of our life have faced criticism. And sometimes we deal with it in the right way, sometimes we don't. Someone like yourself, um, obviously we all love you for the sake of Allah, but also sometimes you might get criticized as well for certain things. How do you deal with this? I think the criticism is not point, not, 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 not one percent. But it's loud. It's loud. And you know what? It's okay. It's healthy, it's good, it's fine. And the people who want to fall in its trap, it's okay. You don't have to please everyone all the time. And if you know something that you want to do and you, you have to pay the price for it, it's okay. You pay it. For as long as you're right, it's between you and Allah. A few people will dislike you, but they don't know you. And a few may love you beyond what is even okay sometimes. I've had some crazy people who, who like sort of irritate you with the amount of love that they want to display. But yes, I, I've arrived at a stage, in fact, from earlier on, it's okay. I, they can criticize, they can say what they want, it's fine. It's not easy for everyone, but I think uh, what hurts is when someone who knows you, when someone who's close to you does that, then it's a little bit painful. Because you know, this person means so much to me. Look what they've done. It has happened a few times uh, where you have a person you look up to as perhaps someone who taught you something. And they're the ones who criticize. And then you start thinking to yourself, oh, no, man. You know, they could have asked me. They could have come to me. They could have dealt with it differently. But it happens. Otherwise, sometimes it's healthy. And I think, um, you know, I, I can actually think of a few examples in my life where something has happened. And suddenly you face an onslaught of things. And then you tell yourself, you know what? It was good that at least the ummah felt that, OK, this was something wrong. Here's the backlash of it. And this is what happened. So the ummah is alert and awake and it's watching and it sees. So in a way, there is a benefit from it, Habibi. And guess what? If criticism comes and they are right, change yourself. I've done it. Change yourself. It's okay. If it came in the worst possible form, a guy swore you big, big swear words, but the one sentence of correction was correct. Take that and excuse the rest. You know, I want to just share something with the audience. I, I, I've mentioned it twice, but I want to say it for a third time because this is a question. A few days ago, last week was it, we were at some event, and after the event, a youngster came to me outside and says, can I have 30 seconds of your time? And I was on my way out and I was about to leave, but it's okay, because you know, 30 seconds you're gonna give, and you're gonna give a lot of people, it becomes a lot, but I saw he's on his own, he looks like a good lad, and inshallah, let me, I said, no problem. He says, can you step aside with me? No problem, step aside with him. And then he, he said, you know, Sheikh, I have really said a lot of bad things about, and I stopped him there. What does he want to say to me? He's built the courage to tell me that I've backbitten about you or I've said bad things about you and I want you to forgive me. That's what he wants to say. Before he finished his sentence, I said, listen, just stop exactly there. I want to tell you two things. Number one. I have forgiven you for what you did before you did it. It's okay. I don't, I'm a man who doesn't hold it. And seriously, I don't. I've forgiven you for whatever was said and even before you did it. And the second thing is, if you ever have to do it again, please do it. Did you hear what I just said? If you ever have to do it again, please do it. Subhanallah. He must have looked at me and said, this guy is being sarcastic. I said, no, and I'm being serious. Number one is forgiven, and number two is, meaning number one is forgiven before you did it. And anyone else, you want to say something bad, why? Why? So now I want to explain it. The reason is, we are where we are because of, of a package of things that Allah's allowed us to go through. One of them is the criticism or the backbiting or the hate. Without that hate and criticism and backbiting, you would not be where you are. If that's what got my boat floating, wow, let it be. It was Allah who floated the boat, not them. Do you get the point? Their criticism will not sink my boat ever. It's Allah who can sink your boat without criticism. So never mind. I mean, if someone said that uh, to make this cake, I had to put uh, two pinches of salt. And the other guy says, well, salt is a little bit, it's not, don't put it in the, ne the next time you make it. But I want the same cake. You've got to add the salt into it. So without that, you know what? 
perhaps we wouldn't have been where we are today. And we have to thank Allah, not to say that I've arrived at the moon or anywhere, but Alhamdulillah, it's part of life. You have to take it and don't hold it against them. I mean, I know I'm, it, it's good you've raised this because it could be motivation for others. Don't worry about criticism of the criticizer. It's okay. It's mostly about them, not about you. It's mostly about them. It's their insecurities, their misunderstandings, their issues, their problems, their lack of foresight sometimes. Maybe they don't think like you. Whatever it might be, it's okay, fine. So that was a, a very interesting story. Yeah.